my friend it's thursday i'm pat sloan and we i i i am on a quest the quest to have this uh all sewn up so it can go to the spa and that project can be done 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 uh and like i said i'm not going to take it down off the wall until that happens <laughs> <laughs> so today we would normally have the quilted witch and because I actually need that design wall and I need to you know put all the parts for the next section together we will do a pass on the quilted witch this week and start it up next week uh, I do have stronger together we are on the last block and I have been working on the border for that so we're going to talk about that and what the deal is but first let me just talk a little bit about the perfect 10 with the horse fabrics up 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 there's another row so where am I at I have got three rows done with sashing and I did little yellow cornerstones so rather than a long strip of sashing so this is the bottom half of the quilt so this is as wide as it is which I think is a fabulous fabulous width this is from the perfect 10 book it is the uh, vanilla quilt and a lot of you are making this one it showcases fabric really well um, and of course for a layer cake they'll all be kind of coordinated these are fabrics many of you sent me to do a horse quilt for my great niece um, so my niece's daughter Okay, so where are we at? The, one of the things that um, I've seen a, a couple times recently is people saying that they have trouble with sashing. And sashing is the part that goes between the blocks. Whoops, that was pinned. Hold on, let me just get this over here so that we can, we can talk from the piece. All right, so this is this is a block right here and the sashing between the blocks is this strip here so that's the sashing and then when we go underneath the block okay let me grab it here there is it will be there'll be a yellow cornerstone and you'll note I changed the yellow to a different yellow because this one goes really well and I have enough then um, anyways I have enough I have enough to do binding okay so here is another part of the sashing repeat so this will be repeated across there and that is the sashing between the rows uh, which if you're doing let's see I have this one so it's the whole length I'm doing the whole length but I'm not really sure let me talk to you here I'm not I'm not really sure where the problem is because when people just say I have trouble with sashing that doesn't tell me anything do you have trouble understanding the concept of what sashing is like you're not really sure what that wording means so I just showed you it was the pieces that set the blocks together or are you having trouble lining up things um, are you working with sashing that's just one long strip without cornerstones and that's a problem or the cornerstones a problem nobody really says you just say I have trouble with sashing and it could be I, I don't really know what that means so if you want to leave me a comment to give me a little bit more detail maybe I will answer it here for you I don't know so uh, what I thought I'd show you is how I approach one long strip so I have a long strip to add this one here that I just showed you uh, I have this to add to the top of this section or if I wanted I could add it to the bottom of this section and so my choice will be to add it to the bottom of this section so that I have less bulk to work with so I don't have to have that great big piece yet I only have to deal with that when I add this big piece to that big piece at the top I sort of try to break it into chunks so if I'm doing one long sashing that is one way I approach it is to so just like half of the piece and then so the other half instead of just keep adding and building you know like four rows five rows six rows instead I do three rows and three rows and have all their sashings okay so if I'm going to put the sashing on here one of the things is you do need to press it and I have not 
I have not pressed mine yet. And so without it pressed, there's, you know, it's just not flat and ready to go. So you want to be sure you get that press. So I'm going to do that right now and have it ready. And then I will pin it and show you how I pin it. So I'm going to sew a long strip, one of the long sashing strips to a long strip of blocks. So first let's just take a look at what I have here. Uh, I am pressing to the sashing. So this is pressed so that the seam allowance is under the green. And the same for the blocks. They are pressed towards the sashing. So the seam allowances are under the green. And what that does is it lets me take the sashing and nest, you know, or snuggle up this, the seam uh, for the, the cornerstone. I can't do this holding it up like that. Hold on. So this lets me nest these together. So there you can see they're right together. I have a seam allowance going this way and the other seam allowance going the other way. And then I pin, 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 pin. Pinning is your friend in this case. We have the other side and I'm going to nest that and pin it. What I will also do is pin across. Now, if you feel like, oh, I don't ever pin it, I just hold it and it works fine, that's great. But if you're having problems, either you maybe are not pressing your seams so that they nest or you're not pinning. I would imagine that is one of the two things. If you're doing both of these things and you're having problems, Describe your problem in the description box here at YouTube. If you are having, doing both of these things and having problems and you have a picture of what you're doing, um, you can put it at my Facebook group. So I've got the rest of this sewn. I pinned rather, got the rest of this pinned. So this is how I would do a long seam so that I have got this whole thing pinned across, it's pinned to the bottom, I'll have a sashing pin to the bottom, sashing pin to the top. And then that way, uh, I'm only working in halves. I have the bottom half done, then I'll do the top half. Before I do that up there, I will show you how to handle this in chunks versus a long unit like this because a long unit some of you just might feel like you, you lose control or it's just a lot to handle eventually you have to have one or two of these there's just no getting around it you will have to have it but you could have less of them if you want to sew these things in chunks and I'll do that with some of the pieces that are up there after I sew this one on so give me a second so you can lift this and just check where you are before you get there. So if you need to make some adjustment, you can do that. Uh, that is something you have control over. Same with the next one if you want to check it. Here it is, all sewn on. Ooh, that looks pretty, doesn't it? I don't know, <laughs> it kind of all rippled along there. It looks really pretty. Okay, so let me just take the pins out. Here is the sashing sewn to the row of blocks. And when I will flip this over and press it, you can see that it matches exactly. So I pinned them and I did that for all of them. And uh, that, is, that is how I do it when I do the long strips. So next, let me show you how to do it in chunks. I pulled the last, the top two rows down. Here's the one that I just sewed, which goes here, but uh, we don't need that right now. What I want to do is show you sewing in chunks. Think of sashing as just, it's just skinny patchwork. It's the same patchwork you would do as if it were a square, it's just skinnier. Uh, so if you wanted to make units, you could do a unit of three, I mean a unit of four, and then a unit of six, or you could do four, four, and two, and then sew all of this together. So this is what a unit would look like. You've got four blocks, one, two, three, four. I have this one sewn already. Here's that sashing. I know it's the same color as the other, so I hope that's not confusing. But here I've got it separated. Sashing, 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 sashing. And then here's the cornerstone. It's just a square. That's all a cornerstone is. It's just a piece of fabric that's a square that's your patchwork, just as if you were doing a square like here. That's a square. Same difference. So 
you would sew that and make it a four patch. Let me just do that so you can see what it looks like. So I have put all the rest of the sashings and cornerstones up here. So if I'm going to sew in chunks, I can do this chunk and then there's a sashing here. So you can either add it to this side or to that side. There's a chunk and then you've got the two patch. But remember there's vertical sashing. And then I added this row here because this full row of horses that goes underneath, I put the bottom sashing, which is along here, but you can see there's no top sashing. And that's what this is right here. So I can just sew it with the, with the units and make that like one patchwork. And then from here with the sashing, one patchwork, or I could just add that patchwork to the end one. And then once I have one, two, three sewn, I put those three together. Sew that to this row, sew that to this row. So then you only have two long rows to do. So that might help some of you. Let me know, let me know, because these are the tricks. These are all the tricks and tips for foolproof sashing. Here it is, here it is, the four patch. And then what I'm going to do is finish the rest of this using the foolproof sashing tips here today. And then I can move on to Stronger Together because this top part will be done. I am going to do a little, um, you know, one and a half inch outer boarding or outer border around the whole thing of the green as well. But I need to get need to get this row and then that other one that I already showed you put all together so I can take this off the wall because Stronger Together we have a border to look at and the last block. So there are two celebrations today. One, it is chilly day. It's winter, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. And chili is a staple in the United States for winter uh, hearty, hearty things to eat. Uh, it's not just for game days. Uh, so if you have a favorite chili recipe, share it over my, at my Kitchen Adventures group, or you can even write the recipe here at YouTube. Not in the quilt group, it'll de get declined if you put it in the quilt group, but the chili, chili recipes, so there's all kinds uh, from traditional to ones with beans, without beans, et cetera, et cetera. It's a lot of fun, chili's a lot of fun. My dad's wife, for many, many years, she loves to cook, um, and for many years, she would enter in her company's chili contest. They did one every year, and she would always try a different one because she didn't care if she won or whatever. She just wanted to try different recipes. And then we always got to have a taste of them before she took it in, so that was really fun. <laughs> She's retired now, so she doesn't do that anymore, hasn't for years, <laughs> but it was really fun. And it is also today, play more cards. So if you're a card player, Tell me in the description box, tell me in the comments rather here at YouTube. Um, but also if you have a quilt about playing cards, I'm sure like a card trick. Card trick is a traditional quilting pattern. I don't see a lot of people making card, uh, card trick blocks right now, but it used to be a really basic block that you put in your beginning samplers that you learn when you were learning to quilt. Uh, but if you have a card trick, quilt or you have a quilt with card fabric because I know there's been great card fabric over the years. Share that at my Facebook group where you can share a photo. That's the best place to share a photo that I'll see it. Uh, so put it over there. I also want to tell you that you had great names for Tuesday and I'm collecting them up because uh, Tuesdays is like I really want to focus on making. Uh, so there were some really good names um, and I'll kind of I'll pick one soon and maybe for, well, well why, don't, why don't we do it on Tuesday? <laughs> this, uh, because I think that might be fun to have a big focus. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about, I'll talk about it on Tuesday. I'll do it on Tuesday. Another thing I want you to be aware of so that you don't miss out if you were looking at this, uh, that Sewing Parts Online, they are running the wrap up of the koala table sale. So you get the, there's a couple different koala tables that you can get. You can get the sewing center cabinet, the embroidery cabinet, or the artistry drawer um, center. And then you get a free, you pick one, either the three drawer caddy or the slim caddy. So if you've, um, or no, no, there's also a Bernina caddy. So there's three different, three, 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 three different caddies and three different, so you buy the unit and then you get a free caddy that goes with it, which is a, they're amazing units in and of themselves. So if you were looking at those, that um, sale is just about over. So be sure you get in on it. 
Stronger Together now, we have the last block. Uh, this is a fundraiser for education, the United Negro College Fund. And our block this week is from Sharice Nichols, who designed the 2022 project. She, she, that was her um, kickoff project. And so she's back again in designing the block, which is books. So here it is because she wanted to, she said that it's all about education uh, and that is a great way to end this quilt along is a block of books. And so I'm gonna keep in the theme with all of my fabric colors. Now you of course could do books with selvage edges or print fabric or all kinds of fun things for your block. I'm just gonna keep it in sync with all of my fabrics that I'm using. And so, uh, let's see, what do I have? So what I did is I kind of put a little sort of sequence here of the, of the blocks. They are, as you can tell here, they are different sizes. Do you see that? They're different widths. Some are wider, some are less wide, which for me, I'm not too concerned about that. But you might have like, like I might, well, for this one, like I probably would, if I'm going to use this one, I wouldn't do the little skinny strip. I probably do. I'll use it for one of the bigger strips. The thing is, I'm not sure about these colors they're just kind of all over the place and i might like in this look at this look how much that one sticks out now if i remove that one much more cohesive aren't they your eye doesn't kind of go like oh look at that navy i don't really need the navy in there i don't think uh, the only th way that you could really do navy to be like more effective i think would be to do this if i put navy and navy, and let's see. Whoops, you just get it. Navy. So, like if I did that, that really changes it, doesn't it? Now it feels like the navy really should be there rather than just one, but it's still super, super dark. It's so dark. Uh, so, I, I don't want to use the navy in the block. And so I will switch out, and I think I need nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or is it eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I need nine. So what I might do is just repeat, and I could just remove that one. This is very pretty, very soft. Um, this fabric is used just once, so I'm wondering, what if I use this one three times? <gasps> That'll be it. I'll use this one three times. And the reason why I say three, is uh, our eye, it's, it's how our brain works. Our brain likes things in threes, uh, fives, odd numbers, three, five, seven, nine. Anything that's an odd number is more pleasing to our eye. And so that, therefore, if I repeat this burgundy, this, I'm sorry, this plum, this plum here, which is used in the first block. So that'd be cool because it's diagonal. So what I'm gonna do is cut these all up and make the block, and then we're gonna look at all four blocks and how much I got done so far. I got about half of the border blocks done. So I'll meet you on the other side. Here it is before sewing. I've got the three purples, and I have them in fairly skinny ones, except for this one here, because this is a skinny, but I didn't want them that close. I wanted to put it over there more. You could always rearrange these. I'm like, if I wanted to, I could split here and put this on this side. Oh, let me try that. Oh yeah, like that better. Like that better. Okay, so I'm going to sew it up. I ended up switching one more block. I switched this blue and pink because this blue will be right next to the blue I'm going to show you up there. And so I needed, I felt it would be better to balance more blue over on the far right side. So let's see how it looks up with everybody else everybody else and a little bit of sashing blocks okay so there you can see <sighs> let me get the other camera <laughs> so i did some mock-up of the blues this is the positions of the blues then i'll be having a green like right here and then yellow right here and that's how the the border will roll out uh, there's a there's sashing and inner border, but yeah, that looks really good. So you can see how the pink here, if I had had blue, then there would be, it would, it, I think the blue balances over here. So it just ends up pulling that color over and looking really good. Okay. I'm super happy with this. I really love how it turned out and this is looking good. 
Now, next week we will talk about, we'll, we'll be finishing up. So I'll have it all, the whole top done. I do want to show you, this is um, what I have left of the border blocks to do. Plus, I'm doing all the cutoffs. I'm going to make all these little shoe fly blocks. So every time when you're making these, see I've got mostly blue now, but when you're making these, you're going to cut this away. And I have all these half square triangles I've been sewing. Here's a stack. Here's a stack right here that's by the machine so I can get them sewn up. And they're two and a half inch is what I trimmed them to. And then I'm just taking scraps that I have, yellow scraps for the center and white scraps for the outside that I keep because I always keep two and a half inch scraps. That's pretty much my only scrap system right now. So anyway, that is that is how the, the border's going. It is going to be so good. I can't wait to get the other colors done. Cannot wait. Yeah, next, next on the list. So we will see you next week with the last of Stronger Together, our fundraiser. And I hope that you are joining in and having a lot of fun with this. So I love you. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.